Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where professionals and entrepreneurs publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. So we're doing business spotlights on, on businesses, professionals, and remarkable people across the country and even in your town. Joining me today from Arizona is uh, Denise Peachy, founder of Gypsy Piano Blues. Gyps, uh, Denise, welcome to the program. Hello. Denise, tell us a little bit about Gypsy Piano Blues and a little bit about your work. Um, Gypsy Piano Blues is a solo act, which I had had before and after. I had a band, it was the start in between bands. And then uh, I went solo back in 2006 period. Um, and like I said, I'm not, not against, you know, playing with other musicians or joining a band, but this will always be, I'm self-published. I have my own label, Gypsy Piano Blues. And um, I do my own, everything, everything is DIY. <laughs> Denise, tell, you know, people want to know during this pandemic, so many businesses and industries have been affected. I'd imagine there's been an impact on live music. How has the, the pandemic affected your line of work? Oh, it's awful. <laughs> and, uh, the, you know, the thing you have to do is you have to, you have to play online. And um, I'm starting to get back to that. I did a show on June 20th for Make Music Chicago. Um, and I'm just now mixing that down. Um, I did that online. It was virtual because before I got here, I was in Palestine, Illinois, and I did the Make Music Pittsburgh uh, when I lived in Pittsburgh, and I was there most of my life. And then I, I went to um, Illinois for a couple months. I joined uh, the Chicago one, Make Music Chicago, and then they were talking about having me do one here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with it. I, I ask them if they wanted me to do a virtual one. See, that's where it affects you. So um, I, I'm not sure what we can do about, uh, they. you know, I don't think we can, um, I'm not sure. I think we can play on the streets here right now. But I don't, the way things are going, um, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, all these uh, musicians on the street, I would love to have it done. It seems um, dystopian, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, uh, we we have to try to um, change. There's a uh, I'm looking at getting a gig up the street here, and I have to sing with a mask, and I'm trying to wrap my head around that one. So. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, so I imagine um, you found some opportunities online to do some shows streaming, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and I imagine when you were before the pandemic, you're playing a lot of municipalities, I'd imagine, and city festivals and, and street fairs. Uh, have any of those turned any online opportunities? Um, and are they paid opportunities like you're used to to make a living uh, as a musician? A lot of them have tip jars and people don't have any money right now. So it's looking pretty grim. We've got to figure a way out of this. We've really got to put um, our heads together and try to figure out how we're going to, uh, you know, play and, and, and make money online. There's different aspects to that that say that you can be successful. But since I had just recently moved, I'm just delving into that again right now because I've done that a few times before. I used to do the uh, first night. I used to do light up night. I used to do uh, past St. Patrick's Day all on the street for the city of Pittsburgh. And now that it's just everything's changed. <laughs> wow. Um, has, has there is there anything like uh, any light at the end of the tunnel on the horizon that you, you uh, are seeing any opportunities coming up or for in the community, have you heard any light at the end of the tunnel? Um, a lot of the uh, uh, big blues musicians are um, doing a lot of virtual shows. They're having a lot of success at it. And they're, they're showing their recording of their um, music online. Um, one guy's pretty big and he's doing it in his attic and they're actually making money so that he can support his crew um, and I think that's wonderful. 
So, How did they do that? Or, or is it just like a virtual tip jar or are there actual fees involved in watching the, you know, the, is it a pay for? There's no fees involved. Paper. People are buying the CDs when they're done with it. Oh, there you go. Okay. Right on. And um, right now I'm into doing the, um, the digital CDs. Um, and a lot of people would ask me, you know, um, the last year I haven't made any physical CDs, although I can. Uh, but uh, a lot of people just like to throw it in their little MP3 player or, or phone. And most of my stuff is on my phone. I'm looking for, um, I have a lot of stuff that I do through Harry Fox, through licensing. There's some stuff. And uh, sometimes it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of money. Sometimes it's a little better. You just have to sort your way through it. You have to think through it to see what you can make money out of. And right now I'm um, in the middle of, you know, trying to see if I can work with a mask on. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to uh, mix down what I made uh, June 20th for Make Music Chicago. And that was just done with the computer. But I have a studio that I'm trying to clean that up with online. And uh, then I can, I, I'm working on it. I've got a whole another album. So I'm doing that also. How do you make money with Harry Fox Agency? I'm familiar with the, the agency regarding like licensing um, of, of music. How does that work uh, licensing wise with Harry Fox Agency? How do you make money with that? Um, they pay you what these uh, companies like, let's say Spotify, pay you for um, licensing your song or there's several that have like Facebook took out licensing last year so they could put music in different, I think it was grocery stores and retail stores. I got three cents. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Spotify, like uh, two years ago, I got $50, $50, $50. You know, I mean, that's a good thing. The, the Spotify's, uh, some of these licensing opportunities, I try to read all the fine print, but I'm thinking sometimes you get a little shafted. Gotcha. Hey, Denise, for our listeners out there that would like to check out your music with Gypsy Piano Blues, how do they connect with you? How do they find your music and how do they support you? Okay, I am on uh, Spotify and I am on uh, Pandora. Um, I'm also in the iHeart Deezer. Just type in Gypsy Piano Blues and because, um, you know, the links are super long. Um, also on Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com slash Gypsy Piano Blues. Uh, SoundCloud, um, you can do a search. And my main site is um, www.gypsypianoblues.net. So it's really gypsypianoblues.net. You don't need to put in the www. Uh, and to support me, um, there's a PayPal that you go to to uh, send any donations or anything. And that's G as in goat, Y as in yak, P as in Paul, S as in Sam, Z as in zebra, E, e as in eel, one, two, three at gmail.com. And that's where I get the donations at. I don't have a Patreon set up. Denise, I really appreciate you sharing your story. I certainly hope that live music comes back. We all miss it. We all miss oh, getting yeah. out there. <laughs> and I hope that turns around quickly for you. Uh, I appreciate you sharing and I wish you continued success. Thank you. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where professionals and entrepreneurs publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. Join me on my next Expert Spotlight. I'm Mark Imperial.